Psalm 92, a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord, how profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know, fools do not understand, that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. For surely your enemies, Lord, surely your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. Fine oils have been poured on me. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the rout of my wicked foes. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him. Veshameru vene Israel et hashabat la hasot et hashabat le daurotam perit olam beni uvein bene Israel oti le olam. Sheshet Yamim Asadonai Et Hashamahim Vietaret Ovayom Hashvi Shavat Vaina Fash Mihamocha Bailim Adonai Mikamocha Nedar Bakodesh Nahorati Lot Ahose Pele Ahose Like thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorified in holiness. You are awesome in praise, working wonders, O Lord, who is like the oh Lord O do Lado Naki To Kile Olam Hasto O do Lado Naki To Kile Olam Hasto how do, how do, how do, how do, how do, Lado Naki Tov? How do, how do, how do, how do, how do, Lado Naki Tov? Give thanks to the Lord, He is good, His mercy forever endures. 
Give thanks to the Lord, he is good. His mercy forever endures. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, he is good. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, el bechot show. Hallelujah, bikia uta. Hallelujah, big for a tough. Hallelujah, care of good low. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, be take a show far. Hallelujah, be never be killer. Hallelujah, be tough, um, Hallelujah, be mean, um, we, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, bitzel tell a shama. Hallelujah, bitzel tell a tura. Call and shama to hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Call and shama. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah,
is the Lord God of hosts, who was and is and is to to come Ashmiye ni babau ke khaste kha kim be khabatakti haudiye ni derakh zuelakh ki ayla khana sahati nafshi hatsi leni me ayavai aronai ayla khisiti Hatsi leni me oyavai, Adonai ele hachisiti. La medeni la sotreton ha, ki ata elohai. Ruhaha tovatena heini, beret michol. Hatsi leni me oyavai, Adonai ele hachisiti. Atsileni me ayavai Adonai elecha chisiti Mizmor le David Adonai roi lo echsal Bihino teshe Yahar bitseni how may menu hot in a lane? Nav she ye shove, Yan cheni, be mahagle tedek, le mahan shemo. Gam ki elech, begeet samavet. Lo irara ki atai madi shiftecha umishantecha shiftecha umishantecha hey ma yenachamuni taroch lefanai. Tarach lefanai shulchan, tarach lefanai shulchan, neged zarerai, dishanta, dishanta, dishanta v'ashem en roshi, dishanta v'ashem en roshi. Kosi revaya Veshavti Bevet Adonai Veshavti Bevet Adonai Veshavti Bevet Adonai Leorech Yahamim Veshavti Bevet Adonai Veshavti Bevet Adonai Veshavti Bevet Adonai Leorech Yahamim 
Exalted and hallowed be God's great name in the world which God created according to plan. May God's majesty be revealed in the days of our lifetime and the life of all Israel speedily, imminently. And we all say, Amen. Blessed be God's great name to all eternity. Blessed, praised, honored, exalted, extolled, glorified, adored, and lauded. Be the name of the Holy One, blessed be He. Beyond all earthly words and songs of blessing, praise, and comfort. And we all say, Amen. Belma divra kerute, viam lich makute, becha ye con, uv yo me con, uv chaye de col bait Israel. Bagala, bagala, uv is man karim, amen. Yeheshma Rabba Mevarak, Lalamulal me almaya, Yit Barach, Yit Barach, Vishtabak, Vit Par, Vit Romam, Vit Nase, Vit Adar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shimei Berhu Lela min kol birkata vishayrata Tush berkata venechemata Damiran balma Vimru Amen O oh, say shalom bimomav, who ya say shalom aleinu ve al kol Israel, vimru vimru amen. O oh, say shalom bimomav, who ya say shalom aleinu ve al kol Israel. Vimru, vimru, amen. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom, shalom aleinu ve'alkol Israel. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom, shalom aleinu ve'alkol Israel. O oh, say shalom bimromav. Who ya say shalom aleinu ve'al kol Israel Vimru, vimru, amen. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Viahavta eight Adonah Elohecha, Vekol Levavcha, Uvekol Nafshecha, Uvekol Meodecha. Vehayu Hadevarim Ha Ele, Asher Anochi Mitzvecha, Hayom Alevavecha. Veshinantam Levanecha, Vedi Barta Bam Bishiftecha Bevitecha, Uvlektecha Vaderech, Uvshokpecha 
ufru mecha. Ukshar tam le alt al yadecha. Vehayu le tota fault bain e necha. Uchtav tam al mezuzopetecha. Uvi sharecha. Lemantis keru va asitem et kol mitzvotai. Vitem keroshim lelohechem. Ani adonai elohechem. Hasher otsei tietchem meretz mitzrayim. Liot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohecha. En kamocha Elohim Adonai, v'en kimasecha. Machut ha machut kol olamim, umem shaltecha, bechol dor vador. Adonai melech, Adonai malach, Adonai himloch, leolam vahen, Adonai oz liyamo yitain, Adonai yevarech, Et amo va shalom. Barhu et aranai ham vorach. Baru haranai ham vorach leolam vahen. Baru haranai ham vorach leolam vahen. Baru hata haranai. Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bachar banu mikol hamim, benatan lanu et torato, baruch ata Adonai, notein ha-Torah. Now these are the rules that you shall set before them. When you buy a Hebrew slave, he shall serve six years, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he comes in single, he shall go out single. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out alone. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to God, and he shall bring him to the door or the doorpost, and his master shall bore his heir through with an all, and he shall be his slave forever. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, Vechaye olam natabito henu, Baruch ata Adonai, no tain hatorah. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech haolam, Asher bachar, Bin vihim tovim, Beratza bedivrehem, Hanemarim, Bemeth. Baruch ata Adonai, Habocher Batorah, Uv Moshe Abdo, Uv Yisrael Amo, Uv Inviye Harmet Vatsedeg.
Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me and what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. He who slaughters an ox is like one who kills a man. He who sacrifices a lamb like one who breaks a dog's neck. He who presents a grain offering like one who offers pig's blood. He who makes a memorial offering of frankincense like one who blesses an idol. These have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. I also will choose harsh treatment for them and bring their fears upon them, because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not listen. But they did what was evil in my eyes and chose that in which I did not delight. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your brothers who hate you and cast you out for my name's sake have said, Let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. But it is they who shall be put to shame. The sound of an uproar from the city, a sound from the temple, the sound of the Lord, rendering recompense to his enemies. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Tzur kol haolamim, Tzadik b'chol hadorot, Ha'el ha'neman, ha'omer v'yoseh, ha'medaber rum kayem, she'akol devarav emet v'atzerek. Ne'eman, ha'tahu adonai Eloheinu, v'ne'emanim devarecha, v'davar echad midvarecha, achor lo yashuv rekam. Ki el melech ne'eman, v'rachaman ata, baruch ata Adonai, ha'el ha'neman, v'chol devarav. Et chayim hi, lama chazikim ba, v'tam cheha meushal. D'racheha, d'archei na'am, v'chom netivateha, Shalom, Hashivenu Adonai, Elecha v'nashuva, Chadesh, Chadesh yameinu, Chadesh yameinu, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu Mashiach Yeshua, Vehadibrot shel habrit hachadasha, Baruch atah Adonai, Notein habrit hachadasha. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly, I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Messiah will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. 
it is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. Where their worm does not die and their fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu hadvar haemet, Vechaye olam nata betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, Notein habrit hachadasha. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, Leman loerta lach. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, Leman loerta lach. Baruchata Adonai, Lamdeni chukecha. Bisvatai si parti, komish betai fiha. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, the man lo echtalach. Billy beats a fanti, Billy beats a fanti, Imratecha, the man lo Join us now as we pray for the land of Israel, the scattered of Israel, and the nations of the world. Our Father in heaven, rock and redeemer, bless the land of Israel. Shield it with your loving kindness, envelop it in your peace, and bestow your light and truth upon its leaders, ministers, and advisors, and grace them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who defend the Holy Land, grant them deliverance, and adorn them in a mantle of victory. Ordain peace in the land and grant its inhabitants eternal happiness. Manifest yourself in the splendor of your boldness before the eyes of all the inhabitants of the world. And may everyone endowed with a soul affirm that the Lord God of Israel is King and his dominion is absolute. Amen. Our Father in heaven, please remember those of the house of Israel and the house of Judah lost and scattered within the nations of the world. As it is written in the Torah, even if your outcasts are at the ends of the world, from there the Lord your God will gather you, from there he will fetch you. And the Lord your God will bring you to the land that your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. And he will make you more prosperous and more numerous than your fathers. Draw their hearts to revere and venerate your name, and to observe all the precepts of your Torah. May all of Israel come to acknowledge Yeshua as Messiah, speedily and soon. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we ask your protection, guidance, and blessing over our country, for its government, leaders, and advisors, and for all who exercise just and rightful authority. Teach them the principles of your Torah so that they may administer all affairs of state fairly. May peace and security, happiness and prosperity, justice and freedom abide in our midst. May the nations of the world experience soon what is written by your holy prophets. 
nation will not raise a sword against nation, and they will no longer learn war. And all of them will know me, from the smallest to the greatest. Amen. At this time, let us all join together in praying for Refua Shlema, for healing for those who may not be feeling well today. We pray for healing and restoration of mind, body, and spirit. And we pray Mishiberach, which is a prayer to the one who blesses us with healing. We pray for each and every person Please feel free to mention the names of those who you know who may not be feeling so well today. And we pray for the whole house of Israel and for all of humanity for healing of body and spirit. <laughs> Mekor ha bracha leim altenu. May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us say Amen. Mi sheberach imoteinu mekor habracha lavoteinu. Bless those in need of healing. With Rafua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. And let us say Amen. May the one who blessed our ancestors, our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our mothers Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. May the Holy Blessed One overflow with compassion upon us, to restore us, to heal us, to strengthen us, to enliven us. May the Holy One, blessed be He, send complete healing, healing of the soul and healing of the body among the people of Israel, and all humankind, and we all say, Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Avinu Shabbat Shamaim, Yit Kadash Shemecha, Tavo Machutecha, Ye Aseret Soncha Baaretz, Kasher Nasa Vashamaim. Ten Lano Hayom, Lechem Chukenu, Uslach Lano at Ashmatenu, Kasher Sochim Anachnu, Lasher Ashmulano. Beat to Vienu Lide Masa, Kim Hatsilenu Minhara, Kilecha Hamamlacha, Vahagvura Vahatiferet, Laomeola Mim, Amen.
Shabbat Shalom, friends, grace and peace be upon you, and welcome to another in our study from the Torah. I pray that you're having a great Shabbat so far. I also would like to take this opportunity to say to you, Happy New Month. We are now in the month of Adar 1. Every leap year, we have two months on the Hebrew calendar, Adar Aleph and Ad Adar Beit. Adar 1 and 2 and so we're in Adar 1 and after that we will go to Adar 2 which is where we celebrate Purim. So I pray that Hashem will bless you and your household with every good blessing from above in this new month of Adar 1. Now we are going to be talking today about the law of restitution. We're in this week's Torah portion that is called Mishpatim. And the word mishpatim means judgments, but it also means verdicts or sentence. You know, like when you are in a court of law and the judge passes down certain verdicts or judgments or an individual is sentenced to some kind of punishment. That's what the word mishpatim means. Now, I always look at Hebrew words that sound alike um, because I, like Rashi, um, make that connection when words appear to have the same letters in them. And so when I hear about Mishpatim, I always am reminded of Mishpocha, which is the Hebrew word for family. Last week, we saw where Hashem took Israel as his bride. And he said, now you, if you will obey my commandments, will become a royal priesthood, a kingdom of priesthood and a holy nation unto me. So we see here Israel becoming a nation with the king and judge of the universe. And so he gave them mishpatim, judgments, which entailed all of these laws and decrees, all of these things that they had to live by in community so that there could be harmonious living. So they were a family, Mishpocha, but they now received Hashem's Mishpatim as it relates to how they were to live in unity, how they were to live united. Now, although these laws were given to Israel as a nation, one of the things that we're going to learn is that, and those of you who have been studying Torah for a little bit knows this, right? So you already know that even though Hashem gave Israel these commandments, these commandments are beneficial to everyone. Once you are a human being and you exist in this realm, these commandments, especially these judgments that Hashem has passed down, right? They are beneficial for harmonious living in any society. And when you look at it, technically speaking, we're all Mishpucha, right? We're all family because this is what Yeshua said when he was asked who is my neighbor because the Torah says love your neighbor as yourself who is my neighbor and based on Yeshua's teaching we realize that our neighbor is our fellow human being so Mishpucha even though it was speaking of Israel as a nation a family right it can on a broader sense incorporate all of humanity. So these Mishpatim that we see Hashem giving to Israel, their laws and the principles should guide our relationship with another human being, whether that person is part of our family or blood relative or not, it doesn't matter. It does not matter that person is a fellow human being. And so, you know, like I said before, these uh, principles can be applied to our everyday living um, for harmonious relationship with our fellow man. I wanna, there is something on my heart. I never planned to start with this, but let me just make this point here. So we know that every letter in Hebrew is telling a story. The letter Mem is how both Mishpocha 
and Mishpatim begins. But I want to draw your attention to Mishpocha family. The letter Mem is the picture of water. I've shared with you before that every single Hebrew letter has a picture associated with it and also a numerical value. The Mem in Mishpocha means water. It has that picture of water. But it also means blood, right? So what we are to understand in Mishpocha is that based on the Mem, we know that family is not only about those who are family by blood, but family can also mean family by water. What do I mean family by water? We know that life, everything there is, the human body is made up of water and life is out of water. So what are we to understand about this? Mishpocha or family means those who are family by blood or those who are family by water. I, I don't know why I was led to share that with you, but I think it's important, especially because of what we are about to study today. So Mishpati, it is all the judgments and different rulings that Hashem would pass down to Israel as to how they were to live in community, how they were to live with each other. And Hashem says, if you live this way, then you will be blessed. And if you don't live this way, then you are going to be experiencing chaos. And you will have to answer to the court of heaven because it is the judge who is passing down these rulings, right? So we know that we are answerable to the court of heaven if we don't live in obedience to Hashem's commandments. But let us get into our study for this week. We're going to begin in the book of Psalms. We're going to look at Psalm 119. Everybody knows that Psalm 119 is all about the Torah. Here, the writer is talking about all the wonderful benefits of living and walking in obedience to God's commandments. Now, verse 89, this is what it says about God's commandments or the Torah. It says, your word, O Lord, is everlasting. It is firmly fixed in the heaven or in the heavens. What does this mean? Your word, O Lord, is everlasting and is firmly fixed in the heavens. Some translations say it is firmly established. So we know that Hashem has revealed himself to man through his Torah. And we know God's heart. We know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable through his word. But Psalm 119 is also telling us that God's word is already established. So every law and principle that Hashem gives to us, it's not only something that he is giving to us, but it is something that is already established. It is fixed in the heavens, meaning that these spiritual laws and principles are there. They guide creation. They guide how we live with each other. Other, and when we live in accordance with how we are supposed to live, the reward that's associated with these principles come to us. However, when we live contrary to these principles, the, the punishment that's associated with breaking these laws come to us and they come to us naturally. Why? Because the word of God is already established. It's firmly fixed in the heavens. And this is why no matter how Hashem loves us, right? When we choose to walk contrary to how God says that we are to walk, we are going to face the consequences of it. Why? Because the laws are already fixed. They are firmly established. Isaiah 40 and verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. So whatever God says, 
is already established. Now, with that said, I would like for us to take a look at this week's uh, Torah portion. So this week's portion begins with laws about slaves, where Hashem says that uh, an individual who has a Hebrew slave, if someone sells himself or herself into servitude for whatever purpose, more than likely the person was in debt and had to sell themselves into servitude so that they could come out of their debt, God says it is not permissible for anyone to be a perpetual slave. And so he gives laws for male slaves, female slaves, and this is about making sure that everyone had a voice, everyone had to be treated equally and fairly under God's laws and instructions. And this is very amazing because one would think that certain people, whether it is that they were poor or you know they were slaves, they had no rights, God says, under my rulings, everyone has rights. And if someone believes that they don't need to adhere to the laws that I have established that are firmly fixed, and they want to go contrary to it, then they're going to be answerable to the court of heaven. Now, when we get to verse 33 of chapter 21, this is where we find the laws about restitution. And it begins by saying, when a man opens a pit or when a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit shall make restoration. This is another word that's connected to restitution. And we're going to come to, um, we're going to, in just a minute, look at uh, the definition for restitution. But let me just read this. It says, he shall give money to its owner and the dead beast shall be his. When one man's ox butts another's, so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and share its price, and the dead beast also they shall share. Or if it is known that the ox has been accustomed to gore in the past, and its owner has not kept it in, he shall repay ox for ox, and the dead beast shall be his. Verse 1 of chapter 22, if a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen for an ox. So if he steals an ox and kills it, he has to repay five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no blood guilt for him. But if the sun has risen on him, there shall be blood guilt for him. He shall surely pay. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the stolen beast is found alive in his possession, whether it is an ox or donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. So with the couple of verses that we've just read, let's take a quick look at the definition of restitution. So what is restitution? Restitution is the restoration of something that was lost or stolen to its proper owner. So if something was lost, no fault of that person, but they lost something, restitution would mean that what was lost would be restored to that person. And remember, I said before that these laws are already embedded in the universe, in creation. So what we are to understand is if there is a law that says if you have lost something or if something was stolen from you, it will be restored to you. It will be returned to you because this is what restitution is all about. It is the restoration of something lost or stolen to its proper owner. Now, let me read here for you. Under the Mosaic law, victims of theft, extortion, 
fraud and negligence were eligible for restitution. Let me say this again. Victims of theft, extortion, fraud and negligence were eligible for restitution under the Mosaic Law. It says the amount of remuneration varied anywhere from 100 to 500% of the loss. The restitution was to be made on the same day that the guilty one brought his sacrifice before the Lord, which implies that making amends with one's neighbor is just as important as making peace with God. So this is powerful. And here we're talking about something that's legal and binding and something that is established in the heavenlies. Now, remember I shared with you earlier that uh, Mishpatim and Mishpocha are connected. And even though God gave the Torah to a family of people, to the nation of Israel, these laws are not only binding on Israel or the, the principles, right? And the end result, reward or punishment for these principles is not only binding on Israel, it's binding on all of humanity. Why? Because the principle is already established in the heavenlies. So, even though Hashem gave Israel these commandments, the same principle applies to all of humanity. So, even if an individual is outside of Israel, but treats people unfairly, they too will come under the punishment as it is established in the heavenlies. With that said, I would like for us to take a look at verse 7 of chapter 22. So verse 7 says, If a man gives to his neighbor money or goods to keep safe, and it is stolen from the man's house. Then, if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief is not found, the owner of the house shall come near to God to show whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. For every breach of trust, whether it is an ox, whether it is for an ox, for a donkey, for a sheep, for a cloak, or for any kind of lost thing of which one says, this is it. The case of both parties shall come before God. The one whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. So let's break this down. If a man gives his neighbor money or goods to keep safe for him, and the money or goods is stolen from the man's house, then the thief has to pay double in restitution. If the thief cannot be found, then the man who owns the property or the house from where your, your goods were stolen, that man has to come near to God to show whether or not he had a hand in his neighbor's property. What does this mean? Whether or not he took all the necessary precautions to ensure that this person's goods were properly taken care of. Whether he tried everything in his to make sure that he took care of his neighbor's property the way he would take care of his. And it says that if it is found that this homeowner was negligent and the thief cannot be found, the homeowner also has to turn around and pay double. So whichever way you take it, whether the thief is found or it was a fault of the homeowner, the law of restitution states that the person had to be repaid double for his property that was stolen either because of negligence or theft or fraud or whatever it is. 
I want to draw your attention to verse 9. It says, for every breach of trust, because an individual would have to trust someone else in order to take something of value to that person and say, can you keep this for me? Can you put this in your house for me? And I will come back for it a later at a later date. It would take trust for someone to do that. God says, if someone trusted you enough to put something in your care and you did not take good care of it, for every breach of trust, whether it is for an ox, for a donkey, for a sheep, for a cloak, or for any kind of lust, Thing. The case of both parties shall come before God, and the one whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. What is Hashem saying to us on this Shabbat through the laws of restitution that we find here in Scripture? You know, last week, the word of Hashem came to us about us being in a, <laughs> a new season, about Hashem acting on our behalf in a new way. And I shared with you that after we moved in obedience to Hashem's commandments last week and entered into a time of consecration unto Hashem, that he was about to step into house of bread and he was about to shift and change things because he himself said, behold, I do a new thing. This is what Hashem is beginning this new thing with that he spoke about last week. It has to do with the law of restitution. Hashem is saying that he is beginning with restoration. You see, a lot of God's people have lost to things that rightfully belong to them. Someone came and took what rightfully belonged to you. But Hashem is saying, I am getting ready to restore to you that which was stolen from you. You are now walking under restitution because what the enemy stole from you or what you lost because of no fault of your own, what was taken from you, Hashem says, it is going to be restored to you. And I have to say this too that the law of restitution does not say that it is the one who stole from you that is necessarily going to have to pay you back. But the law of restitution says it will come back to you. It will be restored to you. It will be returned to you. And Hashem is able to use whomever he chooses to use to restore that which you lost or that which was stolen from you to you. So hear the word of the Lord to you, just as we're coming off of consecration and just as Hashem has said, I am doing a new thing and just as Hashem has said, I'm about to step into your life and into your situation. The first thing that Hashem is doing is restoring that which was stolen. And so today I declare over each and every one of you that you may have been a victim of inequality, a victim of fraud. You have lost dearly. You have lost something that was so important. Some, someone ripped something away from you. The courts of heaven, the supreme judge, who when he puts down a ruling, no one can go and reverse it. 
is saying to you that the courts of heaven is acting on your behalf. The courts of heaven is now acting on your behalf. The job and someone did all sorts of trickery and all sorts of gimmicks to ensure that you didn't get that job, that you didn't get that position, you are about to experience restitution. Not only that, where, where I just read for you, um, chapter 22, verse 7 through to 9, it says that God established that the person must pay double. And it says, when the person is brought into the courts of heaven, the one whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. So not only are you going to be restored, but you're going to get double for your trouble. You are going to be restored double. As a matter of fact, some of you are even going to be restored more than double because I read for you earlier that under the law of restitution in the Torah, it says here the amount of remuneration varied anywhere from 100 to 500 percent of the loss. You are going to be restored, some of you, anywhere between double to 500% of the loss. This is not something that I am making up. This is something that comes from the word of God that is already established in the heavenlies. Chapter 22 verse 1 says, If a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen for one ox and four sheep for a sheep. When God is finished with your case, he's going to absolutely leave you in amazement. And I want you to receive the word of Hashem as he is sending it to his people today. You heard the word of Hashem last week and some of you acted and moved in obedience. And when you act and move in obedience, the laws, the mishpatim, the rulings, the judgment, the verdicts are already established in the heavenlies. When you do what God says that you are to do and you are in the right, but someone decides that he's going to come and he's going to try and rob from you and he's going to try and take what is rightfully yours. Hashem says the law of restitution already covers that. I also want you to know that from the moment that Hashem gave this word to me, one of the things that has been right in front of me is that the law of restitution also applies to your peace of mind. Someone lost their peace of mind. You lost your peace of mind because you couldn't believe what was happening to you. Hashem says that restitution is coming and your peace of mind will be restored to you. Everything that was taken from you is going to be restored to you. Not just double, but up to 500% of what you lost is going to be restored to you. And I pray that you receive it. Now, there is the flip side of this, because the flip side of this says that the law of restitution also applies to you if you're in the wrong. So if you have been treating other people poorly, and if you have been taking from other people what does not belong to you and you have been taking and you have been negligent and you have been walking opposite to what Hashem says as it relates to the law of restitution, now is the time to make amends. Because I shared this with you before, God's word is already established. So it doesn't matter how he loves us. If we go against what he says, then the law is going to give to us what we deserve, measure for measure. So if you have been doing things contrary to what you should be doing, if you have been stealing from people, 
robbing from people, not giving the worker his or her wages, if you have been taking that which does not belong to you, if you are in the wrong, I am saying to you that in this time, when God is speaking to us about rest restitution and restoration, now is the time to make it right. I want to read for you a passage of scripture. We're going to go over to Luke chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. It says, Yeshua entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Yeshua was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Yeshua was coming that way. When Yeshua reached a spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be a guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Restitution. Zacchaeus, when he accepted that Yeshua was the Messiah, he said, I have sinned and I have done things that I'm not supposed to do. But because I am now a new man with a new heart, I am going to pay back anyone that I have cheated and I will pay back. I will make restitution four times the amount. So I'm telling you that this thing works two ways. May Hashem show us if we need to make restitution too, whether it's physical, spiritual, whatever it is. And may we not be in the wrong because the laws of restitution are active in this season. So today I say to you, whatever it is that you feel as if has been stolen from you. For some of you, it's your reputation. Someone spread uh, bad things about you. Some of it may not even be true, right? And you lost your reputation. Validation is the word that I'm hearing in this hour. Validation is coming to you. Restoration. Restoration is coming to you. Your reputation is being restored. Your marriage is being restored. Your self-esteem is being restored. They thought they got away with robbing from you and stealing from you. But I tell you, restitution means that you will be paid double. For some of you, you will be paid triple, quadruple. And for some of you, up to 500% of that which you lost because someone breached your trust. And God says in his Torah, something that is already established in the heavenlies, when there is a breach of trust, the courts of heaven is there to act on your behalf. The courts of heaven is about to make a ruling on your behalf. And so today I encourage you to be ready, be prepared. And I also sense that the Ruach HaKodesh is saying to me, when God is carrying out restitution and when he is handing out his sentence for the things that were done to you that should not have been done to you. Sometimes the tendency is there to be sorry for the other person as they are experiencing what God, the retribution that is coming to them. Let God do what he's doing unless he tells you otherwise. But today I'm saying that restoration is coming to you because you did what God says that you are to do. And if you're not doing what God says that you are to do, now is the time for you to go and make the wrong right. I thank you so much for having joined us for this week's discussion. I pray that it has been a blessing to you. And until we meet again, may Hashem continue to bless you and your household in perfect peace. Shabbat Shalom and Kaltu. Ain't Kelo, hey, hey,
kadonehenu, hen kemalkenu, hen kemoshienu, mi chelohenu, mi kadonehenu, mi kemalkenu, mi kemoshienu. No del lo heinu, no del adone heinu, no del emo keinu, no del emo sheenu, baruch elo heinu, baruch adone heinu, baruch ma keinu, baruch mo sheenu. Atta who will ohay nu, Atta who I don't hay nu, Atta who mokay nu, Atta who moshe nu, Atta who shake tea ru, Ava ho te nu, Lefa neha et kitoret hasamim. Lealenu, it is our duty. It goes in part, it is our duty to praise the master of all, to acclaim the greatness of the one who forms all creation. And we bend our knees and bow down and give thanks before the ruler, the ruler of rulers, the Holy One, blessed is he, the one who spread out the heavens and made the foundations of the earth, and whose precious dwelling is in the heavens above, and whose powerful presence is in the highest heights. Adonai is our God, there is none else. Our God is truth and nothing else compares. As it is written in your Torah, and you shall know today and take to heart that Adonai is the only God in the heavens above and on earth below, there is no other. Aleinu l'shabayach l'adon hakol L'atet kidula l'yotzer b'reshit Shelo asanu kagoye haratot Velo samanu kimishpechot hadama Shelo sam chelkeinu kahem V'gaor aleinu Kechol hamonam Vanachnu korim Umishtachavim Umodim Lifne melech Malche hamlachim Hakadosh baruch hu Shehu note shamayim v'yoseid aretz Umoshav yikaro b'ashamayim mimahal Ushchina tuzo, ushchina tuzo V'gav hei meromim Hu eloheinu einod Hem et malkeinu efet zulato Kakatu betorato, viadata yom, viadata yom, vashevota eleva vecha. Ki adonai huha elohim, vashamayim mimal, vial haaretz, vial haaretz. Mitachat Eino Veneman Vehaya Adonai Lemelech Al Kol Haaretz Bayom Hahu Bayom Hahu Yie Adonai Echan Ushema, 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 Echa. Adon Olam Asher Malach, Viterem Ko Yitzir Nivra, Liet Nasa Vichepto Ko, Hazai melech 
face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Adonai lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. <laughs> 